Mark Hambrick here with another video on the road to be fit and ripped at 50. Today's topic is all about nutrition, vitamins, on how you can take a supplement to help you be physically fit along with a great nutritional diet and an excellent workout plan. Just a reminder that I'm not sponsored. I don't represent no supplement company in this video. Everything that I'm about to talk about is opinion based only by me and my experience from using these supplements. Now let's get to supplements. Let's start off by talking about a supplement store. I'll tell you what, when I walk into a supplement store, even at my age now, I walk in there and I'm overwhelmed. I'm intimidated by some of the products that are in there because there's so many. There's guys in there throwing you a bunch of science words you've never heard of. And I feel like every time I leave a supplement store, I just left my 12th grade science class. I don't know if you feel the same way, but I'll tell you what, I'm overwhelmed when I leave a supplement store. So what we're gonna talk about today, I'm gonna talk about some supplements on what I take, how I take it, how much I take it, and when I take it. Now, let's start to talk about what I take throughout the day as far as supplements and vitamins go. I always start my morning off with a Slim Vance. I take two pills a day. Each pill is about 100 milligrams of caffeine. Now, reason I take a metabolism booster is because at our age, there's no metabolism no more. We've got to do something to kickstart that metabolism and get it going and burn those calories. And I always go then with a multivitamin, one a day multivitamin. The reason I take a multivitamin is because I'm not a big veggie eater at all. And that multivitamin will give me the essential nutrients that I'm missing throughout the day as far as the nutrition that I take in. I also go with a D3 for bone support, just a generic D3 for bone support to strengthen my bones because as we get older, the bones start to deteriorate a little bit and you need to strengthen those bones. Now, another big thing for men, it's the touchy subject of testosterone. We all know once you hit 25, the testosterone levels start to decrease as we get older. So we've got to do something to find that fountain of youth for us older men. And I usually go with a testosterone booster. I'll take my testosterone booster in the morning when my test is at its lowest in the mornings. And I'll also take it at night in the evening before I go to bed. The reason is just to help build that testosterone level up overnight and it won't keep me awake either. I have no trouble sleeping by taking the test booster at night. So I take a couple in the morning, a couple at night. Now throughout my day to help with my recovery, to help build my muscles, to help strengthen my muscles, and to help with my fatigue, I always go with amino with some BCAAs throughout the day. I'll sip on it several times throughout the day. In the morning, mid-morning, I'll sip on it throughout my workout, and then again in the evening. Now, protein's a big thing. We all know about protein. Back in the late 80s, early 90s, there was not much of a selection of protein. That stuff would just clunk up, it would taste terrible, you're pinching your nose, you're closing your eyes just to get the clunks down. But today, their protein has improved so much. It actually has a great taste, and it, it will dissolve easily in water or Skim milk, 2% milk, you can also go with too for the um, extra calcium if you need it. Me, I mix all my proteins with water. Now, I love to go with the whey bolic rip protein. Why? Because it has the thermogenics in it. It has more caffeine in it to help with my metabolism also. A nice thing about this, I take this one around about anywhere from 9.30 to 10 o'clock in the morning, the whey, the whey rip, and I love the taste of it. It dissolves so well in water, it tastes great. It's actually like a little dessert for me. Now, later in the evening, late evening, I'll go with just a regular advanced protein. It's kind of a whey protein that does not have the thermogenics in it. You wanna make sure you cut those thermogenics off or any type of metabolism booster late in the afternoon because it will keep you awake. Now, those are the, those are the supplements those are the vitamins that I take throughout my day. Today, for the first time, I'm bringing in a special guest to one of my videos. His name is Caleb Rackley. He is an ex-student, around 30 years of age now, so it kind of shows you how long I've been teaching. He is a competitive bodybuilder. 
He has been in the supplement nutritional industry for over six years. And he has a wealth of knowledge to share with us also today. And maybe he's gonna give me some pointers too on how I can better my supplements throughout the day also. All right, so as you can tell in that picture, he looks pretty good on stage, but right now he's definitely in the bulking phase, like I said earlier. Now, Caleb, help me out here a little bit. What are some things, you just saw what my regimen of supplements are every single day from the time that I get up to the time that I go to bed. Now, what are some suggestions that you could give me that may, that I could add to my list or something I may need to take away that I really don't need? And plus, for our viewers, could you elaborate in greater detail on some of the supplements that I am taking or I need to be taking or you need as a starter just starting off. So basically, Mark Hamrick has a great stack so far. He is taking his multivitamin. For many years, I have known him. He hates vegetables. Even as a student, seeing him coach, all he would eat every day is his banana, his turkey, and a protein shake. Never had vegetables in it, never had anything. Oh, I forgot, he also ate his Greek yogurt every single day at lunch. He actually does have a pretty good stack. But to break everything down, when I work at my store, at a nutrition shop, when you come into the store, you always want to ask, hey, how's your day going? What brings you in today? When people ask you that, you just want to be honest with them. Tell them straight up, hey, I'm looking for this, I'm looking for that. That way, as you look at it in my shoes, you're being honest with me knowing what your overall goal is. Now, there are certain things out there that can overwhelm y'all, of course. There's many products in the supplement store. I'm not going to lie about that. But one thing is fish oil. Fish oil is a good fat. There are a lot of people that do intermittent fasting and fasted. Uh, fish oil is a good fat that helps break that intermittent fasting. And it also helps with the brain, the joints, uh, everything overall in the body. Then you also, then you also have uh, glucosamine. Glucosamine helps with the joints, especially as people get older, as Mark Hamburg here at 50, that glucosamine is gonna help recover the joints, make them stronger, and make, not make you as sore in the morning, especially if you're living, lifting heavy weights, even if you're lifting lighter weights, you always wanna make sure you have the glucosamine to help the recovery aspect. Now, would I take that in the morning along with everything else or the, throughout the day a couple of times? The best time to take everything is first thing in the morning. Me, personally, I take about 20 pills every morning, first thing in the morning, just to get my day started. Okay. Then you also have Omega Cuts. Omega Cuts is actually a COA, which is a conjugated lactic acid. It also has MCT oil in it. MCT oil is actually a good fat. So the people that are working out every single day, going to the gym, working out for over an hour to hour 15 minutes, that MCT oil is gonna help protect your muscles. So when you work out that long, your body tends to start eating your muscle. And that's gonna start taking your muscle away because your body's using that for energy instead of eating your fat. This also does have CLA in it. Each pill is gonna have about a gram of CLA in it. You usually want to consume about four to six grams of CLA a day. That's about the average, what average people take. Then, of course, you're also going to have more supplements, of course. The Test 600 is actually a great testosterone booster. Anytime you take a testosterone booster or go into a supplement shop in general, always make sure a testosterone booster has an estrogen blocker in it, which is going to be DIN. The DIN is going to help lower your estrogen levels. As your testosterone levels go up, so do the estrogen levels. We want the estrogen levels to counteract and come back down lower. Now, there's some testosterone supplements out there a lot stronger than others yes, where I take course. less pills or more pills. Because mm -hmm. I even noticed that, let's say Costco Warehouse, they even have like a generic testosterone booster. Anytime you take a testosterone booster, testosterone booster in general, you can do the natural way, which boosts mm -hmm. your testosterone level, which is going to be fish oil, zinc, vitamin D3, and tribulus, or slash fenugreek. That's going to help boost your natural testosterone levels in your own body. When you take testosterone boosters, that's going to help a little bit more because it's stronger and it has a little bit more ingredients in it. Now, is there some other ways to naturally increase your testosterone? I heard there's a vitamin called like maca. Maca does help with the natural testosterone levels. It also improves the sexual drive. Okay, and I also see that sold also at the local grocery store also. Yes. Okay. Uh, then you also have, what he's also taking is the Slim Bands. There are many fat burners out there, guys. I'm not gonna lie. I see it every single day. I have people ask questions about it, everything. The best thing I can tell you is to be honest with the sales associate. Tell them how much caffeine you drink a day. A cup of coffee is gonna have anywhere from 175 to 300 milligrams of caffeine a day. That depends on how big it is. When you look at the Slim Mints, it tells you to take four a day, which is gonna be a total of 400 milligrams of caffeine a day. 
when he when Mark Hamburg here takes two, that's going to give him 200 milligrams of caffeine a day. That might be enough for him throughout the whole day. Now, you can also take it in the afternoon between 12 and 3, as Coach Hamburg was saying here earlier, caffeine will keep you up at night. So that's why he drinks his whey bolic ribs in the morning. Now, let me add to that, um, that metabolism booster. Now, when I first started introducing myself to metabolism boosters, I've taken some stuff before Caleb. I mean, it felt like my heart was about to explode. I mean, I could feel my heart just beating 90 miles per hour, it seemed like. So, and the reason why behind that is it's the stimulant aspect. Different thermogenics have different ingredients, and they're stronger. So, with that being said, there is another one, which is the Arsenal X Inferno. That's only going to have about 175 milligrams of caffeine in it, but it does have more stimulants in it, which is such as Uhimbi. Well, that explains it. <laughs> and then on top of that, there's all other stuff that we can take out there. He does take, drink his BCAs, which stands for his branched amino acids. That's a lot better to take than a Gatorade, especially at older age. When you're that old, your metabolism does shut down, as Mark Hambrick was saying here. What does a Gatorade have in it? It has sugars and carbohydrates. If you don't burn those sugars or burn those carbs, what does that turn into? Fat. All right, Caleb, I know you said something about the BCAAs. Now, I've noticed that there's some BCAAs on the market that have caffeine in it. Correct. So, branched amino acids, there are going to be some companies out there that have caffeine in it. The caffeine just helps get you throughout the day, just like that boost of energy. The people that are sensitive to pre-workout, especially at your age, those BCAAs have a low amount of caffeine in it that's going to help you get through that workout, that give you that extra push. And as you're sipping on it during your workout, that's going to help the body recover aspect, prevent you from cramping, the soreness, everything like that, etc. So when you look at BCAs, which is branched amino acids, this is the BCA charge. This has about 125 milligrams of caffeine in it. That alone, as what you're taking, is going to add up more caffeine. So make sure you lower the caffeine down a little bit if you're staying up at night, if it's keeping you up, things like that. So the BCAs, I recommend either take it first thing in the morning if you don't want your coffee, if you're going to go for a walk on the treadmill, uh, on the Stairmaster, the elliptical, things like that, you can sip on it to keep the heart rate up to burn more calories, to burn more fat, to get your metabolism going. Another thing you can do is take it during the day. During your workout, sip on it if you just wanted a little bit of extra caffeine. Gotcha. Then you also have BCAs such as the alpha amino. The alpha amino is not going to have any caffeine in it. It's just going to be a strictly branched amino acid to help with the recovery aspect. That's the main goal. So you can, as Hammer does, he sits on it throughout the day. I do recommend you get a gallon of water, put about four scoops in it, and you drink your BCAs throughout the day to stay hydrated. It's better than drinking a Gatorade, and it's flavored water. There you go. Okay, sounds great. Great idea. Now, let's jump from our BCAAs and let's go to our proteins. I know there's so many proteins out on the market. Like I said earlier, you, from the 80s and 90s, those proteins that used to just clunk up in your milk, clunk up in your water, they wouldn't dissolve easily. There was only one flavor and they were usually vanilla and usually those old products or those old Joe Weider products, uh, which you don't see anymore. But the line of protein supplements is just overwhelming because there's so many out there, they offer so much from whey, ISO, mass builders, uh, with BCAAs already in it, along with thermogenics in it. Um, the list just goes on. If you could kind of simplify that stuff for us and talk you. about it, the difference between what an ISO is and what a whey protein is, and um, along with some gentlemen out there may actually need a mass builder. They may be wanting to put some weight on in their older years, and let's talk about some mass builder. So we'll go ahead and start off with a mass scanner. When you look at a mass scanner, a mass scanner in general is gonna be a tub about this size or it's gonna be in a bag. The reason why is they're bigger scoops, they're gonna have higher calories, higher carbohydrates, a little bit more protein and fats in it. Okay. So the, the best time to take it would be like first thing in the morning with your breakfast. That's right. adding more calories, more carbs to your diet, plus you're getting your protein. So if I'm trying to gain weight, I'm really not worried about how many, uh, let's say, carbohydrates are in there. Not right? necessarily. You okay. also have to worry about the carbs in the protein, yes, and then you have to worry about the carbs throughout the day. Okay. If you're eating too many carbs throughout the day and you're taking that, you're gonna put on more fat because you're probably not gonna burn those carbohydrates. Gotcha. That, that's why I say the best time to take it in the morning, you burn it, take one after you work out, and then take one right before bed. Yes, because I, I'm not sure how many uh, carbs and sugars are in a mass builder, but as far as my proteins go, I always look for something that is less than five, five grams of carbs and less than about 
five grams of sugar. And, that, and that's perfectly fine, especially for what you look at 50, it's paying off. That's the main goal. But there are also other people out there that have a slower metabolism that are trying to gain weight and we need to put them on a mass gain. Exactly. Okay. So mass gainers do range from 750 all the way up to 1300 calories. That's calories alone. And then on top of that, if you add milk, latopia or almond milk into it, you're going to get better fats, better carbohydrates. Then you're going to add more calories and carbohydrates. So just make sure you're watching your carbs. And another thing you have to look out for is when you take in that much protein, your body's going to flush out if, you, if it's not handling it. So that means okay. you just need to take a scoop out and just go from three to two scoops a day. I never should mention almond milk. Now that's something I've never mixed my protein with before, but that you said that's a plus, that's a that's positive. A, that's a very good positive. Uh, Matoka and almond milk are great because it's healthy fats, good protein, and a little bit more calories. Now okay. I've personally done it. I drink a cup of milk, a Matoka milk in the morning. I mix it with my protein shakes and it tastes phenomenal. That's mainly why. Okay, sounds great. Now let's get to some uh, other ones. Okay, we're done with the mass builder protein. Now let's talk about the whey, the ISO, and some of the whey bolic that I take. So when you look at protein, back in the days, muscle milk was the best. They were using a certain ingredient. I can't remember what it was called on top of my head, but muscle milk was the best back in the day. I'll be honest with you. It tastes great, gave you great results. Now as the years went on, they have taken out that product and added more fillers into it. So when you look at fillers alone, fillers alone will make you bloated. Just sits in your stomach, feel like you're bubbling, oh, you have yeah. to use the restroom, things like that. When you look at protein, the advanced protein alone has 24 grams of 24 grams of protein in it. And it also has digestive enzymes in it. Those digestive enzymes are gonna bypass your stomach and break it down for you so your body can absorb it a lot better. You're also gonna get uh, glutamine in it, and you're gonna get your BCAs in it. And if I'm not mistaken, it only has like two to three grams of carbs in it. Oh, per nice, scoop. nice. Well, see, I'm always cutting my carbs. I'm a low carb guy. <laughs> exactly. So. And then you also have the whey ball like ripped. The ripped is a great protein overall. Uh, for two scoops, you're going to get about 150 milligrams of caffeine, I do believe. And if you do one scoop, you're going to get about 75 milligrams of caffeine. Now, the whey ball like is a hydrolyzed isolate protein in general. That's mean breaking it down to the finest it can get to where you won't get the bubble gut you won't feel like you're bloated throughout the day after your workout. That's also gonna have your BCAs in it too. Great protein. Uh, you always gotta make sure when you take a protein, look at the container, make sure it's a hydrolyzed and isolate, it has digestive enzymes in it, make sure that it's fitting your daily needs. Yes, when you look at those other muscle milk, synthesis, they taste phenomenal, I'm not gonna lie about that. I drink it in my off season every once in a while as a milk because I want that thick milkshake because it tastes so good. Like a dessert. Exactly, but then I regret it because it just sits in my gut and I'm just like, oh, why did I drink that? So always make sure you look at the protein. When you look at a hydrolyzed and isolate protein, it's broken down to the finest it can get. Okay. So you're gonna get more per serving, you're gonna get more out of it. And then those BCAs really do help with the recovery aspect, especially the glutamine. Especially as guys your age work out and everything like that, especially me, that glutamine can help with the recovery. Yeah. So you're not gonna be as sore, you're not gonna be like, man, I feel like crap. That protein is gonna help with that. And the best time to drink your protein is 30 minutes to an hour after you work out. That's when you're gonna get the best results with it. You gotta feel those muscles. <laughs> exactly. Those muscles, exactly. Right? Well, and this is and the way and the way bollock is the one protein that my wife actually loves. Oh, his, his, she loves it so she much. They this. call me and I'll call me out, hey, do you have the chocolate in stock? Do you have this? I'm like, no, I don't have it. A lot of people love it. And there's also proteins out there that have testosterone in it. Oh, when, okay. when you look at that, it's gonna taste a little bit different because of the testifin, the tribulus, things like that. It's kind of hard to make a protein that's gonna taste good with that because those tribulus and all that is a, it's a fine powder and structure that it's hard to counteract to get a good taste with it. Gotcha. Now, I know as being an older gentleman, a father of five, um, of course, taste, now that I'm, <laughs> you know, I have a real job and I'm making money, taste, I can't afford because I want something that tastes great. And another thing is um, price. Um, I know these things can be priced from exactly. all the way up to $60, 70 so, in it. When you it's look at the price, the wallet. yeah, when you look at the price, you always just want to look at it like if it's $49.99 and you're getting 30 servings in it, do your math. That means you're going to be paying more per serving. Yes. So when you look at the advanced protein, you get 75 servings out of there, I, I think under 55 bucks, which comes out to like almost 90 cents a serving. Yes. Okay. So you, if you're that, that person that needs a budget, 
make sure you look at the serving and you look at the price. And then if it's some protein has like 21 servings in it, 23 mm -hmm. in it, up to 55, just look at the price and see if it's fitting with your well, daily needs. Well, you know, I always so shop my protein also. I mean, I've seen it at the warehouse stores for sale. I always check your clearance rack also. Oh, yeah. And sometimes I go online um, and you can find some great supplements on sale. You know, I know as I'm older, you know, a father of five, price plays a big role in the supplements that I, I purchase because also my kids are taking some of this protein powder. And before I know it, I mean, it's all gone. Yeah, I just he calls me it. every day and saying, my kids drink all my protein already. I'm like, I just got that for you like two weeks ago. How's it already gone? So I know I have to shop it. So let me ask you this. Does protein really expire? I'm just curious. Protein, all it is is shelf life, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it doesn't expire. I personally have done it before. It'll last up to another six months, especially if it's a non-open container. And it's, it's still good. Now, that's up to you guys. Not a lot of people are like that. Well, that's good to know because I'm always shopping your clearance <laughs> rack and I'll purchase something that's about to expire in a month and sometimes I don't finish it in a month. So that's good to know. Well, Caleb, I want to thank you for coming and sharing your wealth of knowledge with myself and my viewers. And I believe just listening to you today, you've kind of changed up my regimen a little bit. I'm going to add a couple of those items in there. And so hopefully I'll start to look even better at 50 years old. And then again, I want to thank everybody for viewing. I want to thank Caleb again for coming in. Hope to have you back on the show again here soon. Appreciate you having me. If you like it, push the button. Go if you follow subscribe, me on Instagram. <laughs> please subscribe. Share the video also with everybody.